Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, we're going to have a look at the mitigation of the global livestock sector. Um, we're going to go through um, an estimate of the overall potential, but we also are going to review some options and look at case studies that we developed uh, for the, um, in the report that was published in September, uh, tackling climate change through livestock. FAO's work on greenhouse gas emission is a teamwork. Um, you have the names here of uh, some of the people con who contributed to the assessment, um, and they represent quite a wide range of expertise and skills, uh, from modeling and GIS to economics and policy analysis. This work we're doing at FAO has three main objectives. The first one is to produce uh, assessments and, uh, and estimate the mitigation potential. The second one is to um, carry out economic analysis of mitigation costs and benefits. And the third one, uh, that is going to be the topic of uh, Thursday uh, webinar, is uh, about multi-stakeholder initiatives. Caroline already presented uh, GLIM, the model we developed uh, within FAO, the Global Livestock Environment uh, Assessment Model. Um, I'm not going to go through it again, um, but uh, what I would like to say is that the mitigation potential estimate was also based on this model. And uh, this is a tool uh, that was developed to improve the quantification of greenhouse gas emissions from the livestock sector, but it will be expanded uh, to other livestock environmental interactions like land use and biodiversity, uh, nutrients, and water. So what about the mitigation potential? Um, we developed three approaches uh, to estimate this potential. The first one is based on a statistical analysis uh, of the results uh, from the assessment using GLIM um, and looking at the heterogeneity of emission intensities uh, that were presented in Caroline's presentation earlier. From this assessment, uh, the mitigation potential uh, was estimated to be around 30% of overall emissions from the global livestock sector. We also developed five case studies uh, on specific uh, regions and systems uh, using specific options, mitigation options. Um, and the, those options were grouped in packages of options designed uh, on antici anticipated positive effects on uh, emissions, but also producers' income, food security, and broader environmental performance. And from these case studies, um, the mitigation potential was estimated to range from 10 to 45 percent for a constant output of production for the same level of production, let's say, of meat or dairy or eggs. And um, the third approach uh, that we had uh, here to look at the mitigation potential was, was uh, through soil carbon sequestration um, in a joint work with Colorado State University. And in this assessment, um, we calculated that uh, about half a gigaton of carbon can be sequestrated in grassland through better management. And that represents about 7% of baseline emissions. So first, uh, let's look at this um, statistical analysis. Um, if you look, for example, here on this uh, graph, the distribution uh, of emission intensity in intensive brawlers in East and Southeast Asia, uh, so one system, one region, you can see that um, there is a, the, the, the emission intensity ranges uh, from 15 to 20 kilogram of, car of carbon equivalent uh, per kilogram of meat protein to about 50 or 60. And just looking at this range of results, um, if we assume that um, all producers in this kind of systems in this region under those uh, climatic conditions uh, would apply the practices of those uh, that are the most efficient, we could reduce emissions, uh, overall emissions, by 32 percent. So only by applying practices that are already used in the same regions and in the same kind of system. Then let's have a look at the case studies. So on this map, um, you have the five case studies that we developed with the main options uh, that we included in the packages. 
Uh, let's have a look, for example, at specialized beef production in South America, where we investigated the impact of uh, improving uh, pasture quality through better management um, and carbon sequestration, and also the implementation of um, better health management and better husbandry practices. Uh, we look, for example, at other kind of options. If you if you look at the case study on mixed dairy production in OECD countries, uh, we looked at um, lipid supplementation to dairy cows, anaerobic digestion, and uh, overall energy efficiency in the in the food chain in the dairy chain. So the three other case studies that we developed uh, are presented also on this map. We looked at small ruminants in Western Africa. We looked at mixed dairy in South Asia and commercial pigs, um, let's say large-scale uh, intermediate and industrial systems of pig production in East and Southeast Asia. And for each of those systems and regions, uh, we investigated different kinds, different sets of options, different packages. So we run these uh, options and their um, expected impact into the GLEAM model. And uh, this map presents the results in terms of mitigation. Again, let's have a look at specialized beef production in South America. Uh, the options we, we tested um, were estimated to bring a mitigation potential of 18 to 29 percent. Um, in mixed area of OECD countries, uh, the options we tested resulted in uh, mitigation from 14 to 17 percent of uh, baseline uh, level of emissions. So you can see that uh, the mitigation potential was uh, significant in all the different case studies uh, under different conditions and different types of, uh, of, of option tested. Um, and those case studies uh, were, some of them were presented in, in workshops to field practitioner and um, they, actually the options we tested uh, did not require uh, very in-depth change into the system. They were uh, more uh, available practices, slightly, slight improvements of already existing practices. Then let's have a look to the soil carbon sequestration potential uh, through improving grassland management. Uh, this work we conducted together with Colorado State University. Um, by, so in this work, uh, we assumed that uh, the, the forage offtake uh, by ruminants was adjusted to maximize NPP. So basically, um, it was a better management of the grazing pressure adapting the grazing pressure to the potential um, biomass production on the grasslands. And uh, when we run this, um, uh, these assumptions, the sequestration potential was about uh, half uh, a gigaton of uh, CO2 equivalent. And it resulted um, in, um, uh, in various places in, in, uh, in, significant, uh, in significant areas of grassland in uh, better grassland productivity. Um, in this assessment, uh, we, um, we had results on um, the level of utilization of grasslands. And according to them, 37% of grasslands are currently underutilized. That means the baseline offtake is um, under the optimal offtake uh, the, of the grassland. 47% are overutilized and 16 are optimally utilized. That means that on 37% of the grasslands in the world, uh, there is potential for better utilization and better grassland protection. Um, to summarize, the mitigation potential exists for all species, all systems and regions, and it does not require a, a change of system. It is not about applying a system from one region to another region. Um, and there is a strong correlation between mitigation and productivity gains, especially among ruminant systems um, that operate at low productivity, which means that there is room for improvement uh, through productivity improvement. So the results of this study reveal that the main strategies uh, for reduction of emission 
intensity in, li in, in livestock supply chains uh, are, of course, different uh, if you look at ruminants or monogastric. For ruminants, at animal level, um, feed digestibility and balancing, health management and genetics uh, were estimated to have the greater impact. At herd level, it is the maintenance uh, to production ratio. At production unit level, grazing management is significant in terms of mitigation potential. And at supply chain level, uh, it's more about energy use efficiency, waste minimization, and recycling. And if you look at monogastric, uh, at animal level, again, feed balancing health and genetics. Uh, at production unit level, uh, sourcing on low emission intensity feed and also energy is significant. And at supply chain level, again, we found energy use efficiency, waste minimization, and recycling. And before I go into conclusion, uh, let's have a look at um, uh, an overall scheme of uh, the sector's emission, the sector's emission intensity, and the sector production. Um, as I mentioned earlier, the case studies were run uh, at a constant output without increasing um, the level of production. Uh, but a lot of the options we tested actually results uh, in improving productivity in, in more meat, more, more milk from the animals, for example. If we look at the trends, uh, let's start again with demand for animal products that is expected to grow in the future. And the average emission intensity in a business as usual scenario is expected to decrease uh, for, because um, the sector uh, is gaining into efficiency. So as a result, the sector's overall emission uh, under business as usual scenario is expected to uh, grow for, because of the, the growth of demand, but uh, to be uh, partially mitigated by this uh, emission intensity improvement. But if we apply, uh, if we change practices, if we apply um, more efficient practices, then the average emission intensity um, under mitigation scenario would decrease as well. And then the sector's emission uh, would be also decreased. Uh, but resulting uh, from the growth in demand, uh, there would still be an overall growth of emission from the sector, even though it becomes more efficient. And what about uh, if, we, if we don't have the good estimates on the demand growth, uh, if demand is growing higher than what it was expected? So there is still room for research and better uh, assessment, better projection in the future uh, to be able to answer those questions. So some concluding remarks, uh, what we saw here is that there is a vast range of mitigation practices that are already available, and their implementation uh, will require policies, uh, but also education, awareness raising, and the right incentives for, uh, to support technology transfer. There is still work to be done also on the quantification and on inventory methods, in particular uh, for um, the development of common metrics and methods in order to be able to compare uh, systems and to uh, benchmark um, the, the, the emissions and the, and the mitigation path pathways. There is also a need uh, to design tailored mitigation packages adapted to specific regions, systems, and specific climatic conditions. And, uh, this raises uh, questions like uh, modeling at supply chain level or uh, area-wide, but also what are the economics of mitigation, what are the costs and benefits, uh, and also the, the, the trade-offs with adaptation and other environmental concerns like biodiversity or nutrient cycles. And finally, in the meantime, there is still also work to be done into moving the emission intensity frontier through research and development.